Hi everyone. Welcome to Coffee Native, Daily Gardens podcast in partnership with Ubra Shared Space and Cafe Lounge. I'm your host Elsid Fernandez. Daily Guardian has access to some of the most inspiring and compelling individuals, from entrepreneurs who have found success through pursuing their passion to individuals who sacrifice their own interests in pursuit of causes greater than themselves. In this podcast, we will take a deeper look into how these individuals think, what habits they have formed, and how their experiences have influenced the ideas that now guide their actions. All of this over a cup of coffee. For this episode, my guest is Ryan Herzava. Four years ago, Ryan, the medical technology student, was diagnosed with hepatitis B. Because of this, he was told he could no longer pursue his original dream of being a doctor. As he put it, he had to dream another dream. That dream now becomes virtual lahan. Virtual Lahan is a virtual school for persons with disabilities that develop skills and mindsets to become competitive employees and entrepreneurs using the equalizing power of technology. Ryan and Virtual Lahan have gone on to, co- to accomplish a good many things such as, among others, becoming the first Filipino to receive the Inspired Leadership Award, becoming the first Filipino company to win Google Business Group Stories, winning Asia-Pacific Future Maker, and speaking at the World Economic Forum and the Global Disability Summit at G20, and having debated at the United Nations. So welcome, Ryan. Thanks for being here on Coffee Native. My maga, El Cid. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Ryan's family, by the way, is from Antique, so he can speak. Right, the, my father. Uh, so yes. I can speak Hiligaynon and a little bit of Kinaraya. <laughs> You must be better at speaking Karaya than I am. Uh. Um, <laughs> so, virtual lahan. Yes. How do you go from somebody who wants to be a doctor into virtual lahan? Right. Uh, for many people, um, they have this struggle of finding their passion, finding their place here on Earth. Um, my case is a little bit different, I would say, because it was was forced on me. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. Um, Philippines is one of the few countries um, that requires a medical certificate for you to get a job. And unfortunately for me, I contracted a medical condition, um, which I would consider a death sentence to my career. Mm. Because in the Philippines, no hospitals or clinics would accept you if you have a chronic hepatitis, which is crazy. Um, because um, the, the, your, your work, uh, your hard work, um, are not given merit mm. because of a medical condition which you, you didn't choose to have. So I dream of a medical, or to become a medical doctor growing up because um, I grew up in a family where I'm the youngest of them. Both of my parents are farmers. Mm. Neither of them finished high school. Mm-hmm. We were literally living 10 levels below poverty line. And my parents, having um, not given the opportunity to have education, believed so much in the power of it that they said, like, work hard on the farm, you go do your job, uh, and, and study hard in school. So I graduated valedictorian in elementary, valedictorian in high school. Not necessarily because I'm smart, but, but, but because I just didn't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have a choice. Because in the Philippines, you know, the, the public school system, mm-hmm. right? Um, even though it's, it's not costly, it's not necessarily for free, but if you're on top of the class, you get the scholarship. Okay. Right? Um, and so when, when it's time to decide on which course to take, med school, which is a struggle for many teenagers, um, I said I'm going to decision now. I want to become a doctor um, because I want to get myself and my family out of poverty in the noblest way possible. Mm. And growing up, my strength is on science. Like, I love science. So to me, um, it was an easy choice. Um, and. The best way to become a medical doctor is to get the best preparatory course for medicine. Yeah, and that's medical technology. And that's actually when I was diagnosed. I was sixteen mm. um, during that time, but I did not. I did not fully, uh, you know, um, felt the impact 
the magnitude of having this condition and the um, I already graduated, um, I already have my license, um, I'm ready to uh, take off um, with, with my career. And they said like, sorry, um, we couldn't employ you. Mm. And they dismissed you outright. Exactly. Um, and the, the reason is, um, there. I mean, there's no policy that protects people like us from social exclusion. So technically, we have no fight. Uh, we cannot win the battle because uh, we have we don't have enough ammunition on our side. Um, and because nobody decided to employ me, um, I decided to employ myself <laughs> and started with father and son. But like, you wanted to be a doctor, right? So how yes. did you discover the passion to want to start up Bertolahan and train persons with disabilities? Well, um, because the idea is like, if Ryan is rejected from job with all his credentials, with all the job offers he received, what about other people who have the same condition as me who necessarily don't have those credentials? How big is the level of discrimination they actually experience? And that's the same reality shared by persons with physical, psychosocial um, uh, disability as well. This social exclusion in the workplace is costing our society $1.3 trillion annual loss of GDP. Mm -hmm. That's how much economic loss we're having. And because I already have the lived experience, then I thought if there is something that I can do to hack the edu I mean the labor system, right? Um, to, to provide opportunities, job opportunities for these people, then I'll do it. And it so happened that Fred Longhand um, was the answer to that question. So you've experienced this uh, difficult you know, uh, phase of your life where although you, were, you appeared to be brilliant, you appeared to be doing well in your studies and preparing yourself, setting yourself up for a good future, then suddenly all of that just collapses. Like, uh, can you tell us about how you felt? What was the process from recovering from having your entire future plan destroyed and then getting back up? Right. I mean, like, I don't want this episode to sound like it's an MMK episode <laughs> because we don't want that necessarily. Mm. But as a human being, right? Like, I, I think you don't need to further elaborate how devastating um, that that feeling is. But I felt what what is interesting about my case is that I have to handle it by myself. Mm -hmm. um, my family has no idea about my condition. Um, I only told people about my condition and the real reason why I started Vertuanhan on Vertuanhan's first anniversary. Okay. When when Vertuanhan turned one and you have some level of success already, that's when I told them it's like very emotional moment. Like, God, the real reason why I started for one hand um, is because of this. So yeah, it was devastating. Um, it was five years of denying that you don't have that condition. Um, it's five years of like hiding. Um, it, it's, it's five years of severe depression, I would say. Um, yeah, I'm just diagnosed after that. And then did you just decide to get back up? Like, were there people who helped you? Were there... It's it's not like one day you wake up yeah, and yeah. you have this mm. brilliant idea. Right? It's, like, it's, 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 um, I, I think it's a fantasy to say that like that day you wake up and then suddenly you become an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, it definitely is a process. Um, since I was I was a kid, um, and yeah, I was I was telling you this um, earlier before we started that it takes a village to raise a child. Right, right. That's super overrated statement, but <laughs> it's still super applicable. Um, yeah, there's so many people that that helped me um, on that way and like you know and inspired me. Other than just like 
myself and having the lived experience, mm. right? Um, yeah. So like, since virtualahan is all about education and coaching and mentorship, mm-hmm. like, uh, can you tell us about your process about being a mentee prior, like having no choice in your mentors and now yeah. being a mentor yourself? Um, that's interesting because if there's one factor I would consider that contributed to the success of Ritwanan right now, um, it is because of the mentors um, that we have mm-hmm. inside the organization. But what shaped us at the very beginning um, at Ritwanan, um, I, I have a friend, his name is Fabian. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Fabian is the first person I pitched Virtual Hand to. It's like I have this crazy idea. Um, I I, I want to venture um, into this. Um, can you listen to me? Um, he's my roommate uh, mm-hmm. during that time when we're doing um, the BPI Sinag uh, first um, cohort in in Ateneo, and he loved the idea. Um, virtualahan as an original concept, we just want to be an alternative school mm. for adults to directly find employment um, before it actually turned to what virtualahan is now. And on the question of like how the transformation happened from being a mentee to now a mentoring other people. Um, I'm 26. <laughs> I'm, I would say I'm a little bit young to be, like, to become a mentor, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that's one myth I would like to bust mm-hmm. because people think you need to find <laughs> mentors who necessarily older than you. Um, By number. Not yes, by, by number. Yeah. Yes, not by, yeah, just exactly not by experience, not by maturity, um, and I I was lucky to be deeply connected with with people like Coach Christian, for example. He's my mentor from Germany. I studied social entrepreneurship um, at the Do School in Berlin in two thousand sixteen, mm-hmm. when Virtualhand was just three months old, um, and the mindset that was given to us is during this experience, find a mentor who is already living the life that you want to live, like right. the life that you can only dream of. And when Coach Christian stepped into the room and shared his story, I was like, this guy. That's your mentor. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like, um, like dating. Part mm-hmm. of like, <laughs> you know exactly you, you, you want this person. And I'm shameless. After he... Um, he did his workshop. I trained less. I pulled him in a corner and says like, "Chris, um, I was I was taught that like I need to find a mentor that um, is already the li- living the life that I want to live, and I want you to be my mentor. That's like my first mentor proposal." And then he like, said yes. He was caught off guard right. because nobody, um, even though he's mentoring a lot of people already prior to me, but like nobody reached out to him. Somebody he didn't even know. Right. Suddenly... In that intimate level, we're like, I was that serious looking him straight in the eyes. And he says, like, okay, but you be the driver. That's, okay. that's, that's what he says. It's like, what do you mean by that? It's like, in order for this mentorship to work, you be the driver. I'll be on the passenger seat. So you decide how you want to navigate this uh, mentorship journey. Um, and it started that way. We started with, uh, because he lives in Germany, I live here in the Philippines, there's a lot of cultural um, norms you have to mm-hmm. break. Um, and, and it started just like me asking questions to now me spending like four to six weeks in his house, in his family, sitting down in his meetings, shadowing him in, in, in everything that he is doing, um, consulting to him in every big decisions I need to make. Uh, at Virtualahan, he writes me a lot of recommendation letters in, <laughs> in, in, in many of the fellowship um, programs uh, I'm interested to apply. Um, and he has become, from, from mentor to a friend, mm-hmm. to almost a father, um, to me already, that inspired me to like, 
if I have the ability to shape another person's dream, I would take that opportunity. And that's that's actually very interesting, right? Because uh, that sort of culture doesn't seem to exist in the Philippines. Right. Right. This uh, formal asking a person to be a mentor and then having him teach you the way he lives and having letting you shadow him, for example, right. that would be fairly strange in the Philippines. And But yet... Yes, it's it's unusual to, um, uh, if if we can use the word, and there's no template mm, yes. um, to to use. Um, so it was difficult. Uh, it was difficult for me, but also the opportunity because there is no social contract like a mentor mentee um, that is established here in the Philippines. So I have the freedom to mm. shape that the way I want it. Right? Yeah. Um, and that actually gave me the opportunity to not just find one mentor, two mentors, three, four, five, but mentors in every aspect of like my business and my personal and professional development um, that I thought would be relevant to me. Um, and yeah, just being, uh, we don't have that culture, but Filipinos generally, I would say, um, we're um, we're 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 courageous um, uh, at the same time, and we're very social. Um, but how how important is it to have the formal to have it formally said like you're okay? Can you be my mentor and I'm your mentee, or or does this relationship already exist just without the formality of it? I would say just like in a relationship, if you don't have a label. <laughs> Um, then chances are it's going nowhere, <laughs> right? Um, can you relate to that, <laughs> Jethro? <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's uh, it's it's like dating. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be intentional mm-hmm. about it so that you can set expectations. It has to be deliberate, right? Correct. Um, it and it can be like a two way process. All right. Um, and it's sustainable, right? Because. You you have exp- uh, you have set expectations. There's boundaries um, there, um, but at the same time, you know exactly what you want to get out of it. Mm. If you don't have that clarity, then it do- it doesn't make sense to actually have a mentor or like find someone who can help you figure it out. Mm. So, have you had that experience where somebody literally asked you to be their mentor? Yes, um, surprisingly many times, like random people send me messages in Facebook um, to, to ask me or send me emails in LinkedIn and all um, because I speak to several events and I love speaking in front of young people. And you always encourage them to find mentors? Right. Well, not necessarily, but I always encourage them um, to make their... like. I always ask the question, what is your impossible? Mm. Um, because I have overcome so many impossibles um, in my life. Like to me, growing up, my impossible is getting a new pair of slippers, right? <laughs> okay. Because you can only get a new, yeah. new pair of slippers. But like, especially now, talking about oh, one thing I'm I'm very curious when I ask uh, people is like, um, let's check your privilege at this point in a scale of one to ten, how privileged you are. And for these people um, who are actively looking for mentors, these are people who who are from um, privileged back who doesn't necessarily need to go through a lot of pain and have the um, and, and, and have the, the, the opportunity to just like live the life that they want to live mm. um, but are lost. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? Maybe you need a life coach, not a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> there are several cases of those. What's the difference though between a mentor and a life coach? A life coach is more of you navigating your life. Your mentor is not meant to decide on things or like life coach as well. But like um, life coach, you you are paying that person um, to help you answer questions about your life that is very difficult for you. And then you can make decisions based on your answers. Yeah. It's, it's more of like uh, an, uh, an alternative to your therapist. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. Um, and, and your counselors. Um, mentors, on the other hand... Um, Mentors are like your godfathers, mm. but on a very specific field mm. okay. in, 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 in your life. Like, for example, um, Coach Christian, as my mentor, 
um, is helping me so much in in my professional um, growth in in the business, especially the tech side because he's a tech person. All right. Um, but I don't ask advice from him if I have problems with my love life or my family, <laughs> for example. Right. But like he's become your your friend now, though. So yes. how did it evolve to you having to talk I mean, to him with your love life? N- no. <laughs> no, because again, you need to set boundaries uh, to people. Uh, and this is one thing you need to acknowledge, right? Like, um, you need to be very respectful in drawing the line to your mentors. You need to make sure that like when they mentor you, um, they're, they're not just giving time and, and energy towards you. They're investing in you. So you need to make sure that that investment is actually worth it. So you don't want to waste their time like talking about stuff um, like this, in, especially if it's in a formal mentorship type of relationship, right? So you need to be very strategic um, on that. Otherwise, um, it's, it's not going to work. And I have mentors um, I had in the future who's like, Ryan, you've reached the point where you no longer need me as a mentor. So I'm studying now. All right. But there's this... Uh attitude or let's say characteristic that young people have right Mm -hmm. like they want to be mentored but there are some hard things that you will hear throughout this mentorship right like maybe things that you don't want to hear but they have to be said to you things that you're not patient about learning or not really not receptive of Mm -hmm. but how would you how would you navigate through this idea or how would you take it then as a mentee since these are things that you really don't want to hear necessarily. Yes, don't take it personally. Okay. Yes. Because it's not about you. It it's it's not gonna define you as a person if you receive those criticisms. Um, especially if you find a mentor that doesn't share your culture. Um, right. My my coach Christian is German, so by nature the way he communicates is. It's very honest, transparent, direct, and efficient, right? And you need to be comfortable with that um, once you make a conscious decision of finding a mentor, right? You, you need to be um, like careful on those that you will set your feelings aside if you actually want to grow. And then getting moving from this coaching and mentorship idea that you've had now and these experiences that you've had, what makes you think that you want to make this a full business, right? Because virtual Lahan, although it's targeted in a way, it's really mentorship that's been turned into an enterprise. Yeah, technically, um, we don't call our instructors ma'am, sir. We call them coaches. Okay. Um, that the idea behind it is like when you once you enter virtual Lahan, you come there with your individual talent. And then you mix that with a team and you have coaches to give you discipline um, and to help you navigate your way. And that's the secret formula for you to actually um, win the game, right? Um, we're not turning virtual into like a mentorship um, business, but that is definitely one of the core things yeah. um, that we do there um, because we acknowledge the value of it. We acknowledge that if you build that long-term relationship with your mentor, um, your accountability um, is improving, um, your discipline, which sometimes, here's the thing, you cannot trust yourself mm. in some things about your life, and you need another person to always call you out when you're on that situation. And you, all, you, you don't know what you do not know. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Right? Um, and having a mentor can help you navigate that. My mentor saved me um, in making foolish decisions, but also allowed me to make decisions so that I can fail and learn from it. But this idea of uh, of having a, an advocacy, right, and then turning it into a to a business, for example, like it it's almost like an oxymoron per se. Because uh, advocacies are necessarily selfless and the ideas of businesses are necessarily selfish, like they're profit driven. So how do you reconcile it now with virtual land? Um, And that's why social entrepreneurship was born to bridge that gap. 
right? Um, because the old model of donor-based advocacy, mm-hmm. NGO work, is not necessarily um, applicable now that we are changing systems, um, digitalization is mm-hmm. coming in, and just the social contract is changing in the 21st century um, in the fourth industrial revolution. And at the same time, business um, are also going on a different um, polar extreme. And we need to come up with an innovation uh, to make sure that we solve our social problems, mm-hmm. but at the same time, not depending on donors' money, hence social entrepreneurship. Um, at Vertuahan, uh, for example, we are solving a very big systemic problem, and that is the failure of our education system to prepare persons with disability and um, other disadvantaged group for competitive employment. But our main intent, uh, while making money at the same time mm-hmm. and uh, running the business, um, but all of that is reinvested back to the company. Okay. Right. Um, Virtualen runs a non-profit and a for-profit business, so we are a hybrid um, mm-hmm. social enterprise. And our priority is like as long as um, you read in the news that a person with disability is employed in this cafe or mm-hmm. that restaurant. The social problem still exists, mm-hmm. and until we can change that system, um, then there's no way for us to, to actually stop solving it. Mm-hmm. And it's only gonna it's only it's only gonna evolve into something different um, over time. But if you can create a model where you prioritize impact over profit without compromising um, business interests, then Hopefully, um, that will that will make um, you know our our cliche dream of making this world a better place. Yeah, this is actually uh, an interesting topic for me, especially with the coaching and mentorship idea of it. Because when I think about it, if I were to apply it to myself, right, mm-hmm. I can't pinpoint a single person that is necessarily my mentor. Because there have been people at some points in my life, at different points in my life, that they'd offered me, they'd offered me advice, mm-hmm. or they'd helped me through a very tough struggle in my life. But it's like I can't think of anyone who I personally ask, "Can you be my mentor?" Mm-hmm. And even if I could, it almost feels as if. Uh, I would be inherently ashamed to do it or it's difficult for me to go and do it because if I do it, then I'd be saying, you know what, I suck and I have to look for somebody who's better than me. Secondly, what incentive does this other person have to then help me start to excel in the field where he's already excelling in? Because then wouldn't he look at me as competition, for example? Or really, what is there for him in helping me, right? I have a question though. Do you need help or do you even acknowledge and recognize that you need help? I think I would. I think I do. I do. Yeah. Good. Um, because if you are humble enough to accept that like you don't know everything and you need guidance um, and, and insights instead of just reading books, um, or, or watching documentaries on, on these or topics. Listening to, listening to podcasts. Or listening to podcasts. <laughs> um, there is a person, a breathing um, human being who can actually share that insight. Um, and, and you felt the need that like, yes, I have so many questions, so difficult for me to navigate. Um, and I can get our random advices from people. But you can never experience the impact of mentorship mm-hmm. unless you actually commit the whole experience um, and you are intentional about it and then um, your your question about like yeah what's in it for the mentor, for the mentor yeah. right um, and and um, I've asked those questions to my mentor mm. um, and they've given me like euphemistic answer okay, like but they also UGCI give me issue. Like, <laughs> yeah because oh, like oh. Uh, believe it or not like one of my mentor um, he told me he's like Ryan, you are already making the impact that I could only wish. Mm. So if there's a way for me to contribute to that impact, I will do my best 
in my capacity to support you because you are there on the ground. I might be sitting on top of 150,000 employees, all right? But you are there on the ground. What does Christian by the, do, by the way? Um, so Coach Christian is um, an entrepreneur himself. Um, he is a CEO of one big company um, in, in Germany, has sold so many startups. He's an impact investor, mm -hmm. um, an angel investor himself. So he has a lot of experience on this. Okay. So now what he gets from it is a, it's like his impact is through you or something like that. Yes. Um, he believes so much um, on, on, this, uh, on the problem that we're solving in the solution that, uh, that we do. Um, and at the same time, uh, he learns from it. It's changing his perspective as a tech business person, as a serial entrepreneur, um, into turning it into something that he knows he's doing good, he's providing jobs to people and all, but something more meaningful than that. Is this, is this uh, culture of mentorship, is this something that's new? Would we be surprised uh, to find that if we actually formally asked somebody to mentor us, would it be something that... Uh, would our fear that we'd just be rejected outright? Would it be would it be unfounded, or is it like something that is it's a movement that's spreading slowly through people who have gone through mentorship? Mentorship is as old as dating. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has been there. We just haven't tapped into its potential intentionally. Um, okay, and yes, you'll get rejections <laughs> just like in dating. Yeah. Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll go through a phase where it's not a perfect match mm. and that's okay. And there are a several locations where that mentorship will not work. Um, you and you need to be very careful with that. Um, I think that the best um, comparison really is, is like dating, mm. right? Because mentorship, they, mentors, they have the power to influence you, the way you think, the way you behave. Right? They have the power to do that. And, and just like in a bad relationship, for example, if you are in a toxic relationship, you become a toxic person. That's okay. not necessarily healthy. And I would say that's the same for mentorship. So now we're going to take a break. But after the break, we're going to talk about Philippines and Virtualahan and how it hopes to reshape the landscape for persons with disabilities. Um, so people are finding ways uh, on how to make it more attractive um, to the markets they're serving, considering that like if I'm a freelancer right now and I don't have internet at home and I need to find a space where I can actually work and be productive, um, I have too many options. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a restaurant, it's like a bake shop type of um, industry where you really need to be... Um, to be creative and innovative. So what do you feel like, um, where do you position Uber in that? Well, for me, for in example, the Ilo context. Yeah, in the Ililo context, I think Uber is just so premium. Like it feels, it feels like it's premium. It feels like it's not really for students. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's for young professionals. Is it a good or a bad thing? I think that it narrows down your market, but it also targets it really well. Like you can hold meetings here. Mm -hmm. You can hold the... Uh, uh, conferences here and the understanding is that uh, I mean I like the whole uh, plants in the office thing plants in the workplace thing and it's like it, it facilitates this idea that uh, it's it's natural to work here which what is do you what think I it's like. called Uber? Uber is an Uber is an well actually I'm not from Uber but what I know is that Uber is an Ilongo word Uber is work in Ilongo so it's like really about for the working class. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, so the concept is is for people to actually work and be productive. I can't speak for Uber, but that's how I... Yeah, yeah that's how you understood it. Yeah. That's, that's how, how I understand it. it. Welcome back to Coffee Nated Daily Gardens Podcast in partnership with Uber Shared Space and Cafe Lounge. We're here with Ryan Hersava, the founder of Virtualahan. So going back to our discussion on mentorship and uh, coaching, 
Could you have any tips for mentees in their approach toward mentors or like tips of pitching themselves, for example? Yes, um, definitely. One is acknowledge your limitation um, and take advantage of your youth. All right. Because when you're young, there's like a lot of people. Um, you're like a magnet for many experienced um, entrepreneurs and business leaders to actually nurture. Because for many of these mentors, especially in the entrap world, um, they like to leave a legacy. Mm, and the right. only way to do that, or like one way to do that, is to build another entrepreneur and another leader mm. um, that they can position for success. So take advantage of, of you being young. Um, second is be also very strategic. If you have the clarity of what or who you want to be, right? Identify those people, but do not give yourselves limits. Mm. Um, because sometimes uh, we are overshadowed by like, ah, this person is like too high to reach, right? Um, and, and we're clouded by those ideas and therefore it doesn't happen. And it intimidates like, you. Exactly. But if you can list like, you know, um, three people in that specific industry that like, I want to learn from this person. Um, I want to learn how this person makes decision or how he lives his life, how he manages his mm-hmm. day. Um, then, then list those people and find opportunity. You'll be surprised into how technology can just easily connect um, mm-hmm. our people. Um, early this morning, I'll give you an example. Um, there is one SDG champion um, appointed by um, Antonio Gutierrez, the Secretary General himself. He only mm-hmm. appointed like 17 of those, and many of them are prime ministers of countries. But mm-hmm. there is this one particular person who is um, on my SDG on economic growth, um, and like I really wanted to be connected with her. Okay. And I tagged her in an article and then added her in Facebook. And 10, 15 minutes after, she accepted my friend request. Mm-hmm. And then there you go. Okay. We're connected and I have a direct access mm-hmm. to her already. So, um, and, and it did take a lot to actually do that. So, you know, principle hustling. Um, right yeah um but do not overwhelm yourself um uh, as well because mentorship is relationship building and relationship takes so much of you it requires commitment it requires honesty it requires loyalty the level of respect it's an investment on your end as much as it is an investment for that another person and if you're willing to go on a journey together um, but if you yourself gonna commit to that, then did, don't do it. Um, what else? Make sure that you communicate well, mm. like, and and you manage that um, communications, um, especially the channel of communication. Some people are comfortable um, meeting in person versus Skype or versus email. Mm, okay. Some person are not willing to share their personal Facebook. Um, and you know you, you shouldn't be offended if they decide to uh, withhold information from you, for example. Um, but also break the barrier, just like the mindset. Break that mindset um, that it's not possible for you. That it's re- not reachable. Yes. Um, and it's not something that is, I know, um, is worth for you to actually pursue because it benefits you more than it benefits the mentor. Okay. Yes. And organically, you will turn out to be, um, because you receive too much help. Mm. And for many of these mentors, that's the same experience they have. When they were just starting, when they were young and have very little experience, so many people helped them and, and, and contributed to their success that you organically feel that like you have to pay that back. And you have to invest in another person's dream. Mm. And just that's just the whole cycle. 
of like this 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 mentorship process. Okay. For Iliido, for example, mm-hmm. there is an interesting dichotomy between business owners, right? Because uh, we just did innovate Iliido actually with the uh, global shapers, right. and uh, what I found is that there are there is almost an extremes with the business owners. It's either it's a mom and pop shop, mm-hmm. like these are the younger generation is taking over from the parents, and so they have mentors which are their parents, right? right. And also there are several businesses that are startups Mm -hmm. that they only have each other to rely on not necessarily a mentor Mm -hmm. now daily guardian for example is kind of in a in a unique situation because we have our father who is our publisher who necessarily has gone on leave and now has is almost you know uh, not hands-on with the paper anymore Mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time we are trying to innovate as much as possible the media industry that's already outdated Mm -hmm. in ililo so, because in Ililo, we're innovating, we are a mom and pop shop, while at the same time, we don't have a, uh, a model to follow or necessarily a mentor because we're doing so many things like trying to uh, becoming, become more technologically advanced and becoming more digital. So, like, this culture now is quite uh, different to navigate as a person who's just starting up a business. It's either you have somebody to follow or you're just uh, thrown out into the sea and having to swim to shore at night by yourself. Yeah, totally. Um, one is the dynamics mm-hmm. in mentorship, especially in business, um, is different, especially if you are related. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, because there are sometimes one, too much familiarity, um, Two, there's like a lot of social norms mm-hmm. that you need to abide to, um, so you don't you don't get the full experience of mentorship. Um, I'm not saying it's necessarily a, like bad, mm-hmm. but there is a space in the mentorship spectrum for those type of mentorship. But if you are looking for like a mentor that can help you um, in your in navigating your professional career. Um, I would say find a person that is not directly personally related. Because there's a relationship outside the mentorship now, so it blurs the lines. But also that person don't have a background of you right. and therefore can offer fresh perspectives without judgment. Right, right, right. right. Um, and and that, that's why the person is, is more helpful. Over um, a person that knows you for a certain period of time, um, already, like since you were a kid, for mm, example, mm. and have a lot of assumptions um, at, at the back of their head, um, and 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 with that dynamics, for example, in, in family-owned business, um, chances are they would rather mentor those people who are not part of their family mm. uh, versus those people, and not in like it's vice versa. Those people are part of their family are receiving mentorship from either like a, a, another family business. Um, and all but I would say um, regardless of situation um, business environment um, and, and social dynamics mentorship is like dating right mm-hmm. like um, you don't date your cousins <laughs> <laughs> or, your, or your brothers and your sisters I'm learning um, a lot about dating <laughs> <laughs> I'm a matchmaker <laughs> um, but, but also um it shouldn't be forced. All right. Um, that mentorship connection, it's there or it's not there. Um, just like love. It's either there or it's not there. Um, I don't know how best to explain it because just like I said, we don't have a template um, for it. But number one, you just need to go out there and make people fall in love with your vision and make people see that. And if... Um, it's it's almost raising an investment, mm. but only this time you're raising an investment for yourself and not necessarily right. for a company. And you need to reach the point where you're actually investable mm-hmm. okay. already. Yeah. That at least you have proven something um, for for the people to say it's like okay, you're worth my time, and you're worth you're worth my energy. But you need to go out there, show up. Um, and, and, and find actively, proactively find those people um, you, you want to share the journey with and take a chance or two.
here's an interesting and how do you draw the line between being an innovator and being a mentee because uh, i always uh, say to myself if you want to go somewhere find somebody who has already gone gone to gone there and gone back but if you ask him you he'll give you the same route that he took right generally speaking but how do you then try to innovate that and progress from that if you're listening to somebody's experience for example Or am I looking at mentorship a little bit too? I narrowly? can only speak from my experience, but in mentorship, make sure that you're always the one who's on the steering wheel. Mm, okay, like with Christian, yes, correct. Yes, and um, make sure that you're the one who's leading um, the the conversation. Um, and what I mean by that, have the control over what you can take in versus. What you're not. Not everything that Christian says, I apply. All right, right. Right. Like I don't see him as, as the 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 the, my my father who's like whatever you say I obey, mm. um type of situation. But it's like that is an interesting point. But I don't necessarily agree to that. Here's my opinion about it. But it's a good it's a good perspective to have. Correct. Right. I mean that's that's what mentorship are for. Sometimes they give you bad advice for you to validate. What you originally thought is a, a, a good decision to make, um, and that's that's the real value of it. It's never like um, a teacher type of relationship, where it's like, oh, sensei, <laughs> like follow my path uh, type of situation. But like, they can only give what they've experienced, mm-hmm. and whether that's good or bad, um, then it's up for you on how you are. You can actually use that to. Navigate your own way because based on the mentors that I have, they would never want me to follow them. Okay, but they actually are saving me from trouble. Like I have, I have a mentor, for example, who is a senior management consultant at Ernst and Young, mm. and he's just like Ryan, because I told him it's like, should I go for an MBA? Uh, should I try management consulting for like two years and earn so many dollars, and then I go back to entrepreneurship, mm. right? And then he always told me, like, I've been in management consulting for like decades already, and I still want to be you. <laughs> Do you necessarily want to to trade what you have right now, right? So that gives you the perspective. It's like, oh, it might be like that person might have a different journey, but what made him say that? What's in that field of like? I thought is so lucrative, but like he experienced it already, and he wants to save me from that. All right, or maybe he doesn't want uh, a competitor in you. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't. That's that's the beauty in social entrepreneurship, I would say, because um, competition is almost non-existent. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, if there's another person. Who would start for one hand and will deliver the same impact? I would gladly offer every support okay. that I can for that person. Here's a. Do you have you have people that you mentor now, right? Yes. So like, uh, how many would you say, if you don't mind my asking? Around more or less ten. More or less ten. So yes, not in like all formal bases, <laughs> but yeah, I do. Mentor, especially my leadership team at Virtuana, and this is uh, different. Uh, Uh, fields and industries. Yes. Now age bracket. Yeah, and it's a diverse set of people. So you offer a different set of advice, for right. example, based on their demographic. Yes. That must take a lot of time. Yes. So how does a a normal day look like for you? Like you travel a lot. You have a business. You do a lot of events, personal appearance, public appearances, and then you're mentoring people as well. So that's how you that's a that? very good question because uh, I was recently in Shenzhen, mm. and that's how I map the next five years of my life <laughs> down to the hours. Okay. Right. Into like okay, this is mm. the next five years, months leading up to that, the weeks, mm. and like this. I I've never done that. Uh, before, but just like you said, I've reached the point where so many people are demanding of my time and energy, and I have to carefully plan. Otherwise, I'll burn out. Yeah. Right. Um. How do I do that? Is by being very strategic, and like being me myself, being very intentional and setting um time um on that. For example, my Friday um would always be non-virtual and related. 
That's like okay. my extracurricular. It's your fun day. Right. So, um, because other than virtual hand, I, I have Go Viral, I have Activating World Changemaker, I have another biotech company um, I'm, I'm doing. I'm investing in our farm, for example. Mm-hmm. So there's so many things going on. Um, and I have uh, have like side passions of mm-hmm. like you know, okay. this this mentorship and all. But considering that like, okay, I have two hours a week. How do I want to maximize that uh, for for people to like you know harvest knowledge? And how I do it is um, I normally do town halls mm-hmm. among okay. the people yeah. that um, uh, that that needs my my insights and like have them throw questions at me. Yeah. All of the questions that they can throw at that point um, get insights. But as well as, just like you said, all my speaking engagement is tailored upon um, people to indirectly get mentorship from me based out of my experience. And like opportunities like this, all the media interview, all the yes. podcasts. It also maximizes your impact. Correct. But for those like more or less 10 people that I'm mentoring, I, I have set like specific expectations to them like one person i'm mentoring he's 16 years old mm-hmm. right and um what i want i mean like what he needs help from me is like he needs to become a better communicator and he wants to use that as a tool to become a better leader so i would share all the the youtube channels i follow too mm-hmm. like if i have an article that like i think this is super helpful mm-hmm. for that um here one last that, that I would say is like be a person that is always the top of mind of your mentors and your potential mentor. Mm, all right, all right. If you establish yourself in like that industry, um, people would automatically like send you resources, nominate you for awards mm. or this, like read out you even knowing it because you become their top of mind. Yes. And that and if you can narrow that down, that's like on, on the quality of your conversations you have with people. Like the quality of conversation I'm having with you now is the same quality of conversation if I talk to my five-year-old niece mm-hmm. or my 17-year-old nephew or when I talk to the United Nations and I talk to the senator or the president, yeah. right? And if you maintain that level of engagement and just the authentic version of you um, and, and, and maintaining that quality, um, you will establish um, yourself and suddenly like, oh, you think about disability, you think about mm-hmm. hepatitis, um, you think about social entrepreneurship or leadership or people getting out of poverty, right? There's like at least one mm-hmm. line. So it's like about. if you do a Google search in your own mind, what comes up is always... Yes, like what um, keywords yeah. would describe you and your career and your own path and like... You become always the top on search. So it sounds a lot like branding yourself, right? And positioning yourself. Yes, personal branding is yeah. a big component um, towards it. But to be honest, I did not intentionally <laughs> develop a personal yeah. brand. Um, I was you just, just wanted to fulfill your goals, see your goals, and right. it came out like that. Um, maybe I was, unfortunately, fortunately, um, was put in a situation where I had to go through much difficulty, mm-hmm. and after I over, um, like you know, I ever after um, I surpassed and survived all those, it became a beautiful story to tell, yeah. right? Yes. And people like wanted to t- hear those stories, mm-hmm. and so therefore they're like attracted um, to that. You become a magnet for like, like how can you do this? Yes. And like people are curious and always well, pick your brain. Um, but at the same time, how can I support you better? How can I make sure that you deliver the most impact? Um, how can I make sure that you are in a global stage and other young people can use you as a model so that if they do that, um, we can we can build more leaders and entrepreneurs and that's the fastest way to make this world better. It's like all those personal visions yes. they have for themselves and you simply is one instrument they can, um, that, that, that they see. All right. So thank you, Ryan, for coming on Coffeinated. Coffeinated. Thank you so much for your time. I know that uh, we are already taking so much of it already. So thank you so much, and we hope you the best on your. Thank you. I'm down with your salamat. Magbalik pa ko din sa iyo.
This has been Coffee Needed, Daily Guardian's podcast in partnership with Ubra Shared Space and Cafe Lounge. This episode was shot in their boardroom. This episode is produced by Prometheus Enterprises. Special thanks to Creative Partners.